We're going to look at the end of Daniel chapter 3 today, verses 29 and 30. This is Nebuchadnezzar speaking. Therefore, I make a decree that any people, nation, or language which speaks anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces, and their houses shall be made an ash heap, because there is no other God who can deliver like this. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. You know, sometimes you wonder how somebody could be so wrong about being so right. When Nebuchadnezzar realizes that his best plans to ensure his personal greatness have failed, he turns on a Babylonian dime and, for the second time, he proclaims allegiance to the God of Israel. But notice how he does it. Just moments ago, he was forcing his homemade religion on everybody and backing it up with a death penalty. Now he pledges to protect Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego by threatening with the death penalty. He just doesn't get it. He thinks you can change a person's deeply held convictions by forcing them to change. And he applies this Babylonian philosophy of religion now to the faith of Israel. It's an approach to religion that has reared its ugly head so many times that today in the 21st century, there are millions of people who have literally abandoned Christianity because of this mentality. With relative ease, People can point to the atrocities committed by a so-called Christian church over the course of the last 2,000 years. Millions died because people mistakenly believed that you could force them into Christianity with fire or sword. And that doesn't mean that some of the people who took that approach didn't mean well. I mean, in John 16, verse 2, Jesus says something really unsettling to his disciples. He says, the time is coming that whoever kills you will think that he offers God's service. Apparently, it's possible to be utterly convinced that you're serving God when you're doing the opposite. But this story in Daniel chapter 3 highlights a really important principle. Forcing religion on people is a Babylonian thing, not a God thing. As I've mentioned before, this story is an important key to deciphering the 13th chapter of the book of Revelation, where the whole world is suddenly forced to worship an image or face the death penalty. In the end, the real problem isn't going to be communists or atheists on this planet. It's going to be religious people who think they're doing the right thing, and they force the rest of the world to do it too. The problem is an unhealthy marriage of church and state, where people believe they can force others. Read the book of Revelation. You just can't miss this issue. God doesn't force people into the kingdom, but the beast power uses force. And that means, of course, that the followers of God, if they're acting in harmony with God's character and God's will, well, they need to love people and woo people and win people, but never force them. The use of civil force with religion has always proven disastrous in the past, and the prophetic portions of the Bible warn us clearly that we can expect it to be a problem again in the future, which tells me that Christians need to be very careful. By all means, plead with your friends. Open the Bible and persuade them but never force them, because that's how Babylon works. God, on the other hand, gives us a better way to live.